from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome to theCUBE. We're here at DataWorks Summit 2018 in Berlin. I'm James Kobielus. I'm the uh, lead analyst for Big Data Analytics on the Wikibon team of SiliconANGLE Media. Um, we uh, on theCUBE, we extract the signal from the noise and here at DataWorks Summit, um, the signal is big data analytics and increasingly the, uh, the imperative for many uh, enterprises is compliance with GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, comes in five weeks, May 25th. Um, there's more things going on, so what I'm going to be doing today for the next 20 minutes or so is I have, uh, from Hortonworks, I have uh, Thank you. Abbas Ricky, who's the Director of Strategy and Innovation. He helps customers, and he'll explain what he does, but he, at a high level, he helps customers to identify the value of investments in big data analytics, big data platforms in their business. And you know, Abbas, how do you justify the value yeah. of compliance with GDPR? The value, I guess the value would be avoid penalties for non-compliance, right? Can you, can you do it as an upside as well? Is there an upside in terms of if you make an invest, and you probably will need to make an investment to comply, can you turn this around as a strategic asset, po po yeah, possibly sure. so, for the investment? So I'll take a step back first. So the point so which Like a big data catalog and so forth. Yeah, yeah. so if, if you look at the value part which you said, it's interesting that you mentioned it. So there was a study which was done by McKinsey which said that only 15% of executives can understand what is the value of uh, a digital initiative, let alone big data initiative. Yeah. Similarly, Gardner says that if you look at the various quadrants and if you look at various issues, the fundamental thing which executives struggle with is identifying the value which they will get. So that is where I pitch in and that is where I come in and do it on a day-to-day -day right. perspective. Now if you look at GDPR specifically, one of the things that we believe, and I've done multiple blogs around that and webinars, is GDPR should be treated as a business opportunity because of the fact that- An opportunity. Business opportunity. It shouldn't be necessarily seen as a compliance burden on cost or your balance sheets because of the fact it is the one single opportunity which allows you to clean up your data supply chain. It allows you to look at your data assets with a holistic view and if you create a transparent data supply chain and your IT systems talk to each other, so some of the provisions as you know, in addition to right to content and right to portability, et cetera, is also privacy by design, mm. which says that you have to be proactive when you're defining your IT systems and architecture. It's not necessarily reactive. Mm -hmm. But guess what, if you're able to do that, you will see the benefits in other use cases like single view of customer, or fraud, or anti-money laundering. Because at the end of the day, all GDPR is allowing you to say is that, where do you store your data? What's the lineage? What's the provenance? Can you identify what a personally identifiable information is for any particular customer? And can you use that to affect as you go forward? Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity because to be able to comply with the provisions, you've got to do, you've got to take steps before that, mm -hmm. which is essentially streamlining your data operations, which obviously will have a dominant effect on the efficiency of other use cases. So I believe it's a business opportunity. Right, now it, part of that opportunity in terms of getting your arms around what data you have, um, when your GDPR is concerned, the customer has a right to withhold consent for you, an enterprise that holds that data, yeah. to use that personal data of theirs, which they own, for various and sundry reasons. Um, many enterprises, many Hortonworks customers, are using their big data for things like AI and machine learning. Yeah. Won't this compliance with GDPR limit their ability to seize the opportunity to build you know, deep learning and so forth? Can, what are customers saying about that? Is that going to be kind of a downer or a chilling effect on their investments in AI and so forth? So, so there, are two, there are two elements around it. <clears throat> the first thing which you said that our customers do is machine learning and AI, yes they are. Mm -hmm. But broadly speaking, before you're able to do machine learning and AI, you need to get your data sets onto a particular platform in a particular fashion, clean data, otherwise yeah. you can't do AI yeah. or machine learning on top right. of it. So the reason why I say it's an opportunity is that because you're being forced by compliance to get that data from every other place onto this platform, mm -hmm. so obviously those capabilities will get enhanced. Having said that, I do agree if I'm an organization 
which does targeting, retargeting of customers based on multiple segmentations. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things is online advertisements. In that case, yes, your ability might get affected, but I don't think it'll get prohibited. And that's effect, that affected time span will be only sh small because you just adapt. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about machine learning and AI is that you don't create rules, you don't create manual rules. They pick up the rules based on the patterns on how the data and the data sets have been performing. So obviously, once you've created those structures in place, initially, yes, you'll have to make an investment to alter your programs of work. Mm -hmm. However, going forward, it'll be even better because guess what, you've just cleaned your entire data supply chain. Mm. So that's how I would see that yes, right. for a lot of companies, e-commerce, you do targeting and retargeting based on the customer DNA, based on their shopping profiles, based on their shopping habits, and then based on that you give them the next best offer or whatever. So yes, that might get affected initially, but that's not because GDPR is there or not. That's just because you're changing your programs of work, you're changing the fundamental way by which you're sourcing the data mm -hmm. and where they're coming from and which data can you use. But once you have tags against each of those attributes, once you have access controls, once you have, once you know exactly which customer attributes you can touch and you cannot for the purposes, have, do you have content or not? Your life's even better. The AI tools or the algorithms, machine learning algorithms will learn from it themselves. Right. So essentially, once you have a tight ship in terms of managing your data in line with G the GDPR uh, strictures and so forth, um, it sounds like what you're saying is that it gives you as an enterprise the confidence and assurance that if you want to use that data, need to use that data, you know exactly how you've got the processes in place to gain the necessary consents yeah. from customers, you know, so there, there won't be any nasty surprises later yeah. on if customers complain because you've got procedures, legal procedures for getting the consent, that's great. You know, um, one of the things Abbas we're hearing right now in terms of compliance requirements that are coming along, maybe not part of GDPR directly yet, but um, related to it is the whole notion of algorithmic transparency. As you build machine learning models and these machine learning models are driven into working applications, um, being able to uh, transparently identify if those models make a particular, particular say autonomous action based on particular data and particular variables, and then there's some nasty consequences like crashing an, an autonomous vehicle, the ability, um, uh, uh, they call it explicable AI, to roll that back and to determine who's liable for that event. Um, does Hortonworks have any capability within your portfolio to enable more transparency into the algorithmic underpinnings of a given decision? Is that something that you enable in your solutions or that your partner IBM enables through DSX and so forth? Give us a sense for whether that's a capability currently that you guys offer and um, whether that's something that, in terms of your understanding, that are customers asking for that yet or is that too futuristic? So I would say that it's a two-part question. The yeah. first one, yeah, yes, there are multiple regulations coming in. Like if you look at financial markets, it's MIFID, BCBS, et cetera, and organizations yeah. have to comply. You've got the IFRS, which spans across telcos, insurance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yes, a lot of organizations across industries are getting affected by compliance use cases. Where does Hortonworks come into the picture is, to be able to be compliant from a data standpoint, A, you should need to be able to identify which are those use, which are those data sources you need to implement a particular use case. B, you need to get them to a certain point whereby you can do analytics on them. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole storage and processing all of that. But also, which you might have heard at the keynote today, from a cloud perspective, it's starting to get more and more complex because everyone's moving to the cloud, which means if you look at any large multinational organization, most of them have a hybrid cloud strategy because they work with two or three cloud vendors, which makes the process even more complex because now you have multiple clusters, you have on-premise, and you have multiple different IT systems who need to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Which is where the Hortonworks data plane services come into the picture because it gives you a unified view of your global data assets. Yes. Think of it like a single pane of glass which whereby you can do security and governance across all your data assets. So from those angles, yes, 
we definitely enable those use cases which will help with compliance. Making the case to the customer for, um, for a big data catalog um, along the lines of what you guys offer, um, isn't it, you know, making the case, there's a lot of upfront archi data architectural work that needs to be done to get all your data assets in shape within the context of the catalog. How do you justify, how do they justify making that expense in terms of hiring the people who, the data architects and so forth, yeah. needed to put it all in shape? I mean, how long does it take before you can really stand up a working data catalog in most so, companies? So again, you've asked two questions. First of all is, how do they justify it? Yeah. Which is where we say that the platform is a means to an end. It's enabling you to deliver use cases. So I look at it in terms of five key value drivers. Either it's a risk reduction, or it's a cost reduction, or it's a cost avoidance, okay. or it's a revenue optimization, or it's time to market. Against each one of these value drivers, or multiple of them, or a combination of them, each of the use cases that you're delivering on the platform will lead you to benefits around that. My job, obviously, is to work with the customers and executives to understand what will that be, to quantify the potential impact, and which will then form the basis and give my customer champions enough ammunition so that they can go back yeah. and justify those investments. Now, Abbas, I'm, we're going to have to cut it short, but yeah. I'm going to let you say, make, finish your point here, yeah. but we have to end the segment, so go ahead. That's fine. So, okay, well, anyway, we have had Abbas Ricky, who's the uh, Director of Strategy and Innovation for Hortonworks. Uh, we're here at DataWorks Summit uh, Berlin, um, and thank you very much. Thanks I hate to cut it short, it's but uh, we have to move yeah. to the next guest. No worries, pleasure, thank okay. you very much. Take Cheers. care, have a good Thanks one. Thanks a lot. Cheers.